Hello, I'm Dr. Marge, and today we will discuss the two stages of tooth preparation. The initial tooth preparation stage and the final tooth preparation stage. For the initial tooth preparation stage, step one is outline form and initial depth. Step two, primary resistance form. Step three, primary retention form. Step four, convenience form. Step five, removal of any remaining infected dentine or old restorative material if indicated. Step six, pulp protection if indicated. Step seven, secondary resistance and retention forms. Step eight, procedures for finishing external walls. Step nine, final procedures, cleaning, inspecting, and sealing. For the initial tooth preparation stage, the preparation should be supported by sound tooth structure in all directions. When we talk about sound tooth structure in all directions, that means your enamel should still be supported by sound dentine, by healthy dentine. Again, the enamel should always be supported by sound dentine. While the preparation is extended to the non-carious dentine, a limited pulpal or axial depth should be preserved. In the initial tooth preparation stage, we use short burrs compared to your, in contrast to your prostal burrs, which are mostly long, in operative dentistry, we usually use short burrs. In operative dentistry, it's very, the preparation is always conservative. In prosto, your preparation, your tooth reduction is very liberal. So very conservative sa operative dentistry. Okay. You look at that. Your burrs have different sizes, width. So if you know the width of your burr, then you can already estimate by just looking at your burr inside the tooth, the depth of your cavity or the width of your isthmus or the dovetail. So is it a good idea to measure your burr before using it for tooth prep? Indeed, it is. Initial tooth preparation stage, cavity preparation walls are designed in the initial stage of tooth prep to retain the restorative material in the tooth. So, para hindi madislodge, hindi matanggal yung amalgam or composite resin or GI. To resist potential fracture of the tooth or the restoration from masticatory forces. While the patient is eating or chewing, the tooth and the restoration should not fracture. So that form that we do in the cavity is what we call resistance form. Kanina, to retain the restorative material, that is retention form. Okay, Retention form, to retain the restorative material in the tooth, Resistance form to prevent or resist fracture to the tooth or the restoration. In the final tooth preparation, completion of tooth preparation includes excavating any remaining infected carious dentine. Okay. When you use your spoon excavator, or any hand cutting instrument, these instruments should be sharp, or else you will just be putting too much pressure on the tooth. And you will tell the CI, Tok, ayo na matanggal. May team pa ba tayo na matanggal? Because your instruments are not sharp. So, your hand cutting instruments should be able to cut tooth structure. 
It also includes removing all restorative material if indicated. Number three, protecting the pulp. Remember, in your dental materials, you were able to manipulate different pulp protection materials like calcium hydroxide, zinc oxide eugenol, or glass ionomer. Okay? The main benefit of the use of glass ionomer is the release of fluoride. Okay? Board exam question. What is the main benefit for the use of GI? Your answer is the release of fluoride. Letter D. Incorporating additional design features that both minimize the chance of tooth or restoration fracture against oblique forces and maximize the retention of material in the tooth. Okay? Basta prevents fracture of the tooth or the restoration that is resistance form. Maximize retention of the material in the tooth. It is retention form. And then letter E, finishing preparation walls and margins. Letter F, cleaning, inspecting, and sealing prior to placement of the restorative material. So initial tooth preparation... Let's simplify the initial tooth preparation and the final tooth preparation. Let's simplify into seven steps in cavity preparation or tooth preparation. Number one will be outline form. Number two, resistance form. Number three, retention form. Outline, resistance, and retention form can be done in one procedure. And number four is convenience form. Number five, removal of remaining decay. Number six, finishing of enamel margins and walls. And number seven, cleansing of the cavity. These steps in cavity preparation is what we do in conventional cavity design. Again, the seven steps in tooth preparation is what we do in conventional cavity design. When you do conventional cavity design, Whatever restorative material you choose for the patient, the tooth can stand on its own. There will be no problem. So what is outline form? Outline form refers to the extent of the preparation on the surface of the tooth. Ano ba yung shape? The carrying of the marginal outline to the points it will occupy in the finished restoration. Always remember, when you do outline form, you always follow the anatomy of the tooth. The original anatomy of this premolar has triangular fossa in the initial pit and the distal pit. May V and dito. Tapos may ganun, may central groove. Kung nasaan ang inyong letter V, yan ang gagawin mong dovetail. Dovetail. Then you have your isthmus, the narrowest portion of your preparation. And this shape for the premolar is what we call H shape, dumbbell shape, or butterfly shape. Again, outline form is the extent of preparation on the surface of the tooth. Kung anong shape yung ginawa mo based on the anatomy. So how do you achieve correct outline form? Extend all cavity margins into solid structure. No marginal carry should remain. And enamel wall should be supported by sound dentine. So, is it okay? To leave caries in the dentine area okay. only if it is already affected dentine. If it's affected dentine, you may leave uh, the brownish area 
or the dark yellow area in the preparation. Okay, but if you see caries on the enamel or the EJ, you have to remove. So when we do outline form, we follow we follow the anatomy of the tooth. Okay, extend the cavity margin, which approaches deep developmental grooves into their grooves and include non coalous fissures in their entirety. Okay. So here, you have caddies on this area. And here from the distal pit going to the palatal. Sorry. Here you have caddies on this area. So even if the caddies is only here, you will still have to do your dovetail. You will still have to do your dovetail here. And then going down like that. Here, even if the caddies is only at the central fossa, you will still have to do your dovetail. That's part of your outline form. Next. When two pit and fissure cavities approach each other, they should be united. Always include the entire fissure in a preparation if any part of it is involved. So, for example, here, yung buccal area, nagkaroon ng caries, nag-connect na dito sa occlusal, occluso buccal ka na. So, meron ka na dyang hagdan, meron ka ng step. Ito rin, less than 1 millimeter. So, you have to continue. So, you have your dovetail here. It's dovetail. Going down. Then, dovetail. Yeah. But if you still have a very thick oblique ridge without caries do not unite you will have two separate preparation on the distal and the michel part hindi nagko-connect hindi magkadugtong here also for the snake eye for the mandibular first premolar you have a very prominent transverse ridge and the caries is only here so you do not connect do not connect Next, extend all cavity margins to include carry susceptible areas. Okay, which are carry susceptible areas so that the margins terminate in self cleansing areas. So, ano ba yung carry susceptible areas? Pit and fissures, proximal surface, gingival third of the facial and lingual surfaces. So, dapat ang margins mo nandun sa cleansable areas, cleansable by saliva, food, lips, or tongue. Okay. So, ano ba yung cleansable areas? Proximal line angles. Smooth surface above the height of contour. Okay. Then in class 5, it is said that you have caries immunity beneath the free gingival area. Pag nandun na sa loob ng gingiva. Okay. Number 5, extend the gingival margins occurring in the gingival one-third of teeth beneath the free gingival area. This area is relatively immune to caries. Ito, class 5 caries are very common in patients with Poor oral hygiene. Doc, I don't want to brush near the gum line because it bleeds. Uh, the more that you have to brush it because plaque stays there. And number six, do not terminate preparation margins on extreme eminences or slopes such as stress-bearing cusp and marginal ridge. So cusp is a stress-bearing area. Marginal ridge. Cusp is a stress-bearing area. Marginal ridge. Stress bearing area. Okay, so hindi po mag extend yung preparation mo dun sa may stress bearing area or else during mastication, the tooth will fracture or the restoration will fracture. Okay, and we continue the second step in the next 
video.